Otolar ecology is rapidly undergoing changes. Now commonly head and neck surgeries are being performed by otolar ecologists. Head and neck oncological procedures need flap reconstruction. Basic knowledge of flap surgeries is a must for all otolar ecologists. This lecture is meant to provide vital insight about flaps. Definition for ideal flap was provided by Ralph Millard. It says that when a part of one's person is lost, it should be replaced in kind, bone for bone, muscle for muscle, hairless skin for hairless skin, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The name flap owes itself to the Dutch term flapper, which means a structure that hung loose and broad. Ancient Indian surgeons had contributed a lot to this science starting from Susrutha. Ancient Indian common punishment was chopping of the nose. Hence they had rich experience in various reconstruction procedures. Basic tenets of flap surgery is to replace like with like. Reconstruction plan should follow Millard's concept of units. These units and subunits should be carefully studied before any flap procedure. There are seven major units in the human body. Head, neck, body and extremities. Suturing of flap should not be under tension. The terms flap and graft means different things. Flap is a unit of tissue that can be transferred from one site, donor, to another, recipient site, while maintaining its own blood supply. Flap is transferred with its blood supply intact, whereas a graft is a transfer of tissue without its own blood supply. Survival of graft depends entirely on the blood supply from the recipient site. Classic example of graft is skin graft. Two types of skin grafts are commonly used. One split thickness graft which includes entire epidermis along with part of dermis. Two full thickness graft which includes entire epidermis and dermis. While designing facial skin incisions the skin lines should be taken into consideration. These skin lines run at right angles to the underlying muscles of facial expression. Hence elliptical skin incisions along facial skin lines produce optimal results without causing cosmetic distortion when muscles of facial expression acts. Flaps can be classified in a variety of ways, depending on their blood supply, type of tissue to be transferred and location of donor site. Blood supply is the most vital component of a flap. Flaps with a named blood supply are known as the axial flap, and flaps that derive blood supply from unnamed vessels are known as random flaps. There are five types of axial flaps classified according to their blood supply. Type 1 axial flap, has only one vascular pedicle for example fascia later. 
Type 2 axial flap, has blood supply served by dominant and minor pedicles for example Grassley's flap. Type 3 axial flap, has blood supply served by two dominant pedicles for example gluteus maximus flap. Type 4 axial flap, has blood supply via segmental blood vessels for example sartorius flap. Type 5 axial flap, derives blood supply from one dominant pedicle and many segmental blood vessels for example latissimus dorsi flap. This slide illustrates diagrammatically the various types of axial flaps. Flaps can also be classified according to the tissue being transferred namely skin, fascia, muscle, bone, viscera, for example colon, small intestine, and omitum. Composite flaps include fasciocutaneous, myocutaneous, tedocutaneous and osseocutaneous flaps. Flap classification scheme according to the location of donor site. Tissue could be transferred from an area adjacent to the defect. This type of flap is known as local flap. They may be further subclassified depending on its geometric design. Pivotal flaps are also known as geometric flaps. They include rotation, transposition, and interpolation types. Advancement flaps, this type includes single pedicle, bipedicle, VY flaps. Tissue transferred from non-contiguous site i.e. distant flaps. These flaps could either be pedicled or free flaps. The pedicled flaps are still attached to their blood supply, while free flaps are totally severed from their blood supply and are reattached to vessels at the recipient site, microastomosis. Advancement flap first conceived by Celsus was popularized by French surgeons. These flaps are classically used to cover skin defects close to an area of skin laxity. Initially it was used in forehead, scalp, eyelids and upper lip reconstructions. For advancement flaps to survive a critical blood supply of 1 to 2 milliliters per minimum per 100 grams of tissue should be maintained. These flaps depend on random blood supply arising from anastomosis within subdermal and dermal plexus. Since head and neck area is highly vascular, the flap length is to width ratio could be 4, 1. Broader the base of the flap better is its cervical. Advancement flaps are of three types. 1. Mu-pedicled flap. 2. Bipedicled flap. 3. V and Y flap. Monopedicled flap is a rectangular flap that can be moved forwards. Small triangles are created on both sides of the base. These triangles are known as burrow triangles. They help in reducing redundant tissue at the base of the flap. Bipedical flap can be moved sideways. It is created by making incisions on either side of the flap. This flap is a random flap deriving blood supply from unnamed vessels. Commonly these are skin flaps. V flaps are created using V-shaped incisions. Broad base of the V advances into the defect covering it. Closure is performed using Y-shaped suture line. If long flaps are needed delay phenomenon can be made use of. <laughs>
After raising the flap one to three weeks time is given before advancing it. Delay phenomenon works because the choked blood vessels open up if time is given. It can be used to cover wounds surrounded by lax tissues. Widest area of the V-flap should be close to the edge of the wound. Glabella flap is best suited for reconstructing surgical defects over the bridge or upper portion of dorsum of the nose. This is actually an axial flap with blood supply from supratrochlear artery and also from dorsal nasal branches. Upper portion of the incision should be carried down to the periosteum. The pedicle of the flap lies close to the nasofrontal angle. It is outlined longer than necessary to avoid tension while suturing it. Injury to supratrochlear vessels is prevented by performing blunt dissection in this area. Sliding rotation degloving nasal flaps are used in reconstruction of full thickness surgical defects of skin in the upper half of the face. This is an axial flap with blood supply from asolabile artery. The apex of the flap is in the midline with symmetrical right and left limbs. Nasolabial flap is an full thickness axial flap. It derives blood supply from nasolabial artery. It is highly reliable with a width to length ratio of 1 is to 5. It is used to reconstruct defects of ala of the nose, calumella and philtrum. Rhomboid flap is a geometric flap. It is a random flap deriving its blood supply from subdermal plexus. It is very useful in persons with lax skin. It is useful in reconstruction of lateral nasal and cheek defects. Only disadvantage being the low length to width ratio. Mustardy advancement rotation cheek flap. This axial flap derives its blood supply from terminal branches of facial artery. Superior portion of the incision should be carried up to the temple in order to reduce flap tension during repair and also helps in preventing drooping of lower lid. The vertical limb of the incision should be sited in the preauricular crease. This flap is useful in covering infraorbital and cheek defects. Bilobed flap is a random flap used to cover defects in various parts of the body. These patients should have lax skin for better cosmetic results. In the face this flap should be elevated superficial to facial musculature. The first lobe of the flap covers the defect while the second lobe covers the donor area. Pectoralis major myocutaneous flap includes skin and muscle. It is an axial flap supplied by acromiothoracic artery. This flap is useful in reconstruction of oral cavity, oropharynx and larynx.
deltopectoral flap, also known as barkamjar flap. This is an axial flap supplied by branches of internal mammary artery. This is again a myocutaneous flap. This flap is so large that it can cover any site from the neck up to the zygoma.